I've been meaning to make a sequel to my top 5 fan patch PSP games video from 2015, but things kept pushing it back. Well, the time has finally come, but with a twist. This time I will be looking at fan patches for PS1 games instead. Entries are in alphabetical order. There is no other hierarchy to this list, which is to say these games are all great. So first of all, we have Asuncia Matsu no Jubaku, which released for the PS1 on November 27th, 1997. It's actually a very timely game to discuss because it shares a lot of mechanical aspects with the current trend of indie games. That is to say, it is an RPG with roguelike-esque randomly generated tendencies. Players will spring into a randomly generated map full of monsters, towns, traps, and the like. There is a story and a set amount of missions to progress things onto the next map, but where the story objectives are located Located is, you guessed it, randomized. It's also a very low budget RPG if you couldn't tell from the graphics. So why didn't it release outside of Japan? Well, the publisher, Zing Entertainment, did not appear to have a big presence outside of Japan in general. As I said, it had a lower budget so going against something huge like Final Fantasy VII in 1997 may have also been a deciding factor. Speaking of Final Fantasy VII, let's move on to another Square Stuff title, aka Front Mission 2, which released for the PS1 on September 25th, 1997. For those unaware, most games in this series are tactical RPGs fought with mechs on a global level. They are, simply put, amazing. Unfortunately, North America would not receive a title until the fifth game, counting the two spin-offs, which was Front Mission 3 in 2000. Unfortunately, despite some goodwill with a few titles after this, most of this series is still under lock and key. Well, that's where the fans come in, but despite having worked on this game in particular for years, the patch is is still not complete. It is about 75% ready, with menus being the big triumph, which is to say the story is barely translated at all. It also appears that the project has been abandoned and will not get updated unless some other team decides to finish the work. Next we have Police Knots, which first released for the PC 9821 on July 29th, 1994, before eventually getting ported to the 3DO in 95, and then the Sega Saturn and PS1 in 96. It's an adventure game written and directed by Hideo Kojima of, as if I need to say this, Metal Gear fame. It's actually the work that directly preceded Metal Gear Solid in 1998. Anyway, this is basically Lethal Weapon but set in the future of 2040 where space has been colonized. While the film noir setup of the story has nothing to do with Lethal Weapon, the two main characters of Jonathan and Ed look like anime counterparts to Mel Gibson and Danny Glover's characters in that movie respectively. Like most adventure games, players will point and click around to gather information or objects. Nearly everything in the game is voiced, and while it is in Japanese, it's still very good. Along with basic elements, there are also a few action segments like shooting galleries. This is also not Kojima's first adventure game. Prior to this, he made Snatcher, which is also an anime-esque copycat to a Hollywood film, Blade Runner. Unlike Police Knots, one of Snatcher's versions actually did get a Western release via the Sega CD port in 94, six years after the initial PC-8801 launch of 1988. If you're a fan of Kojima and like his quirky charms, this is a must play even if you aren't accustomed to the genre. Moving on, let's talk about Super Robot Wars Alpha Gaiden, which released for the PS1 on March 29th, 2001. It is one of many, many games in the Super Robot Wars series that has not left Japan, and for good reason. See, the whole premise of this tactical RPG is to cross over as many mech-based properties as possible, usually anime. A few mentions for this particular game alone include Gundam, Getarobo, and Macross. It is a licensing nightmare, so that is primarily why they rarely get official release, not to mention a lot of said properties are more obscure outside of Japan besides Gundam. I should also mention, like that of Front Mission 2, this patch is not 100% complete, but instead taters at 95%. Otherwise, menus and story bits are complete. And finally, we have Tearing Saga, which released for the PS1 on May 24th, 2001. This was a late entry for the console considering the PS2 launch in 2000, which may explain why this game was never localized. Well, besides the legal heat it received. Shouzu Kaga was the creator of Fire Emblem and one of the key people at Intelligent Systems. He left the company in 1999 following the release of Fire Emblem Thrasia 776 on Super Nintendo that same year. When he left, Kaga created a new studio, Tiernanog, and developed Tier Ring Saga. 
At a glance, this looks exactly like Fire Emblem, wouldn't you say? This drew the aforementioned legal trouble via Nintendo for obvious reasons. As is the case with most litigation, it's very complicated, so I'm not gonna get into it. If you know Fire Emblem, then there really isn't much to say about Tearing Sug, though. It's more of a spiritual successor than a clone, and is thus very good because of that. It later received a PS2 sequel in 2005, which also didn't get a Western release, maybe because the PS3 was just a year away. Not to mention the other game did not cross over. Now that's a bit of a sour note to end on, but cheer up! Thankfully, like the rest of these games, fans at least took it upon themselves to release the first game in English. As a final note, kudos to everyone involved in not only these five games, but all of the other translation projects as well. Thank you, and thank you all for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from me, then subscribe to my channel, and also check out my articles over at The Gamer. All these links and more are in the description notes below. Thanks for watching!